There we go, now we're live. Okay, I just had to change servers. Question being, do I want to, like, put it on, and I think maybe? <laughs> Thanks for the follow. <laughs> uh, I'm just getting all some stuff trimmed up while people uh, roll in for a second. Achieve enlightenment, yo. This is going to be Imaginationless, thank you, and it is in fact time. Time to become enlightened. You know it.
That's a little too aggressive. I want to get this color right, just a second. That'll do it. Nice. <clears throat> All right, um, let me make sure volume is volume okay for everybody. I just picked like a random vaporwave mix, and I might in fact just start it over, so that we can, uh, you know. do it. I don't know why I said I'd do this, but, you know, that's life, I guess. This is the Gateless Gate, also known as the, uh, is it Borderless Gate? I want to say. I can check that real quick. I probably should. There's, like, a more accurate, uh, translation of the title. My memory came it's been a hot minute. Uh, since I've read this. The Gateless Barrier is the more accurate translation. Yeah, let's do it. <clears throat> the Gateless Gate. Translated by Ichi Shimomise. <laughs> 1998. Preface by Mumon. Our teaching makes our mind the principle in the gateless gate, its very gate. Since it is the gateless gate, how can one pass through it? Are you not aware of the insight that purports those who have entered the gate are no family treasures? What is gained as a result of cause and effect has beginning and end, and thus will become nothing. Such remarks are like raising up waves in the windless ocean, or gouging a wound into healthy skin. Those who cling on to words are fools who believe that they can catch the moon with a stick, or scratch their itchy foot through a leather shoe. How can they see reality as it actually is? In the summer of the first year of Shijoting, 1228, Ikai Mumen was lecturing on Koan of the ancient masters to the monks at the monastery of the Luingxiang Temple, <laughs> Luingxiang Temple in East China. He intended to use the Koan as bricks for battering the gate in order to inspire the pursuer of Zen according to his ability. His notes were unwittingly collected. There is no order as to the beginning or the end. In total, there are 48 cases now called the Gateless Gate. If anyone like eight-armed Nada, who bravely goes straight forward, ventures into Zen practice, no delusion will disturb him. The Indian and Chinese patriarchs will beg for their lives in his commanding presence. If, however, he hesitates even a moment, he is just a person that watches from a narrow window for a speedy horseman to pass by and misses everything in a wink. The Great Way has no gate. A thousand roads enter it. When one passes through the gateless gate, he freely walks between heaven and earth. Case 1. Joshu's Dog A monk asked Joshu, Has the dog the Buddha nature? Joshu replied, Moo, which is nothing. Muman's comment, For the pursuit of Zen, you must pass through the barriers or gates set up by the Zen masters. To attain his mysterious awareness, one must completely uproot all the natural workings of one's mind. If you do not pass through the barriers nor uproot the normal workings of your mind, whatever you do and whatever you think is a tangle of ghosts. Now, what are the barriers? This one word, Mu, is the sole barrier. This is why it is called the gateless gate of Zen. 
The one who passes through this barrier shall meet with Joshua face to face and also see with the same eyes, hear with the same ears, and walk together in the long train of patriarchs. Wouldn't that be pleasant? Would you like to pass through this barrier? Then concentrate your whole body with its 360 bones and joints and 84,000 hair follicles into this question of what Mu is, day and night. Without ceasing, hold it before you. It is neither nothingness, nor its relative not of is and is not. It must be like gulping a hot iron ball that you can neither swallow nor spit out. Then, all the useless knowledge you have diligently learned till now is thrown away. As a fruit ripening in season, your internality and externality spontaneously become one. As with a mute man who had had a dream, you know it for sure, and yet cannot say it. Indeed, your ego shell suddenly is crushed, you can shake heaven and earth, just as with getting a hold of a great sword of a general. When you meet Buddha, you will kill Buddha. A master of Zen, you will kill him too. As you stand on the brink of life and death, you are absolutely free. You can enter any world as if it were your own playground. How do you concentrate on this, Mu? Pour every ounce of your entire energy into it and do not give up. Then, a torch of truth will Ill illuminate the entire universe. As the dog a Buddha nature, this is a matter of life and death. If you wonder whether a dog has it or not, you will certainly lose your body in life. Case 2. Hyakuju's Kujo's Fox. Hyakujo. There we go. Alright. <laughs> Whenever Hyakujo delivered a Zen lecture, an old man was always there with the monks, listening to it, and when they left the hall, so did he. One day, however, he remained behind, and Hyakujo asked, Who are you? The old man replied, Yes, I am not a human being, but in the far distant past, when the Kashapa Buddha, the sixth Buddha of the seven ancient Buddhas, preached in this world, I was the head monk in this mountain area. On one occasion, a monk asked me whether an enlightened man could fall again under the law of karma, cause and effect, and I answered that he could not. Thus I became a fox for 500 rebirths and am still a fox. I beg you to release me from this condition through your Zen words. Then he asked Hyakujo, is an enlightened man subject to the law of karma? Hyakujo answered, no one is free from the law of karma. At the words of Hyakujo, the old man was enlightened and said with a bow, I am now released from rebirth as a fox and my body will be found on the other side of the mountain. May I request that you bury me as a dead monk. The next day Hyakujo had the Karmadana or deacon beat the clapper and he informed the monk, monks that after midday meal there would be a funeral service for a dead monk. No one was sick or died, wondered the monks. What does our Roshi mean? After they had eaten, Hyakujo led them to the foot of a rock on the furthest side of the mountain and with sta his staff poked the dead body of a fox and had it ritually cremated. In the evening, Hyakujo gave a talk to the monks and told them the story of the Law of Karma. Upon hearing the story, Obaku asked Hyakujo, You said that because a long time ago an old Zen master gave a wrong answer, he became a fox for 500 rebirths. But suppose every time he answered, he had not made a mistake. What would have happened then? Hyakujo replied, Just come here to me, and I will tell you the answer. Obaku then went up to Hyakujo and slapped the teacher's face. Hyakujo, clapping his hands and laughing, exclaimed, I thought the Persian had a red beard, but here's another one with a red beard. Mumhan's comment. The enlightened man is not subject to karma. How can this answer make the monk a fox? The enlightened man is not free from the law of karma. How can this answer release him from his fox's life? If you have one eye in regard to this, then you understand Hyakujo's, this old man's, dramatic 500 rebirths. Free from karma or subject to it. They are two sides of the same die. Subject to karma or free from it, both are irredeemable errors. Case 3. Gute's Finger. Gute raised his finger whenever he was asked a question. 
about Zen. A boy attendant began to imitate him in this way. When a visitor asked the boy what his master had preached about, the boy raised his finger. Hute heard about the boy's mischief, seized him, and cut off his finger with a knife. As the boy screamed and ran out of the room, Gute called to him. When the boy turned his head to Gute, Gute raised up his own finger. In that instant, the boy was enlightened. When Gute was about to die, he said to the assembled monks, I received this one finger Zen from Tenryu. I used it all my life and yet could not exhaust it. Then he passed away. Moomin's Comment where Gute and the boy attained enlightenment is not at the tip of the finger itself. If this simple truth is not comprehended, Tenryu, Gute, and the boy, and you, also will be bound together once and for all. Gute made a fool of old Tenryu. With the sharp blade, he did simply harm the boy. That's nothing compared to the mountain spirit when he raised his hand and split Kasan, the great mountain, in two. Thank you for the bits. <laughs> Case number four. Wakuan's Why No Beard. Wakuan, looking at Bodhidharma's Bodhidharma's? Bodhidharma's Bodhidharma's picture complained. Why has the barbarian no beard? Moomin's comment. If you study Zen, you must study it with all your heart. When you attain enlightenment, it must be true enlightenment. When you really meet Bodhidharma face to face, then you finally have gotten it right. However, when you start explaining it with words, you have fallen into duality. Do not explain your dream before a fool. The barbarian has no beard. How could you add obscurity to clarity? Case 5. Kyojin's man hanging in the tree. Give me your money. <laughs> Thank you for the reason, Master of the Run. <laughs> Welcome to Tai Tuesday's Enlightenment ASMR. Hell yeah! Kyojin's man hanging in the tree. Kyojin said, It, referring to Zen, is like a man, monk hanging by his teeth in a tree over a precipice. His hands grasp no branch, his feet rest on no limb, and under the tree another man asks him, Why did Bodhidharma come to China from the west, India? If the man in the tree does not answer, he misses the question, and if he answers, he falls and loses his life. Now what shall he do? Moomin's comment. In such a predicament, Though your eloquence flows like a river, it is all to no avail. Even if you can explain all of the Buddha Sutras, that also is useless. If you can rightly answer the question, you walk the road of killing the living and reviving the dead. But if you cannot answer, you should wait for ages and ask Maitreya, the future Buddha. Hyojin has had really bad taste and spread the poison everywhere. He stuffs with it the monk's mouths and lets their tears stream from their dead eyes. Case 6 The Buddha's Flower Once upon a time when Buddha was in, that's not a real word, mountain, he twirled a flower in his finger and held it before his congregation. Everyone was silent. Only Malhakashapa wholeheartedly smiled, Buddha said. I have the eye of true teaching, the heart of nirvana, the formless form, the mysterious gate of dharma. Beyond the words and beyond all teachings to be transmitted, I now pass this on to Mahakashapa. Moomin's comment. Golden-faced Gautama impudently forced the good people into depravity. He sold dog meat under the name of mutton, and he thought he'd made it. What if all the audience had laughed together? How could he have handled, handed the eye of the true teaching, or if Kashapa had not smiled, how could he have transmitted the teaching? If you say it could be transmitted, he is like a golden-faced old huckster swindling at the city gate. 
And if you say it cannot be transmitted, how does he hand it on to Mahakashapa? At the turning of, the fl of a flower, the snake, his disguise, shows his tail. Mahakashapa smiles. Every monk does not know what to do. Case number seven, Joshu's washing the bull. A monk told Joshu, I have just entered this monastery. I beg you to teach me, Joshu asked. Have you eaten your rice porridge? The monk replied, I have. Then, said Joshu, go and wash your bowl. At that moment, the monk was enlightened. Moomin's comment. Joshu opened his mouth, showed his gallbladder, true mind, and the depth of his heart. If this monk did not really listen to and grasp the truth, he indeed mistook the bell for a pitcher. He made it so simple and clear, it might take a long time to catch the point if one realizes that it's stupid to search for fire with a lantern light. The rice would not take so long to be done. Case 8 Keichu's Wheel One sec, I'll get this right. There we go. Case 8, Keichu's Wheel. Getting asked the monk if Keichu, the ancient mythological wheel maker, made 100 carts, and if we took off the wheels and removed the hub uniting the spokes, what would then become apparent? Moon's Comet. If anyone can answer this question instantly, his eyes will be like a meteor, and his mind like a flash of lightning. When the hubless wheel turns, even the master would be at a loss what to do. <laughs> Thank you for joining the Patreon. <laughs> Thank you for joining the Patreon. It was quite good. When the hubless wheels turns, even the master would be at a loss what to do. It turns above heaven and beneath earth, south, north, east, and west. No, I love it. No, no, no. Please interrupt the mood. It's part of the comedy. Reminder, this is both serious and still comedy. It's a very multifaceted stream we're doing today. Oh, if that's all it takes you to not achieve enlightenment, you're never getting enlightenment. Case 9. Daisu. <laughs> Thank you for two months. Mucho appreciate I always knew Tai would bring me closer to enlightenment. I do what I can. Case 9. Daitsu Chisho Buddha. A monk asked Seijo, Daitsu Chisho Buddha, did Zazen, meditated, for ten kalpas in a meditation hall, could not realize the highest truth, and so could not become fully emancipated. Why was this, Seijo asked. Your question is a very appropriate one, the monk asked again. Why did he not attain Buddhahood by doing Zazen in the meditation hall? Seijo replied, because he did not. Lumen's comment, you may know the old Indian, but you are not allowed to have an understanding of him. If an ordinary man in tires attains enlightenment, he is a sage. When the sage is concerned about an understanding, he is only an ordinary man. Rather than putting the body to rest, let the heart rest. When the mind is realized, then one need not worry about the body. If the mind and the body have completely become one, this is the perfect life of a sage, and praise is utterly meaningless. Case 10 Sozan and poor Seizai. The monk named Seizai said to Sozan, I am alone and poor. I beg my teacher to bestow upon me the alms of salvation. <laughs> Thank you for the bits. <laughs> I am alone and poor. I beg my teacher to bestow upon me the alms of salvation. Sozan said, Akarya Seizai. Yes, sir, replied Seizai. Sozan said, 
something has drunk three bowls of the wine of Haku of Sagan, but says that he has not yet even moistened his lips. Moomin's comment. Seizai overplayed his hand. Then what is his real state of mind? Sozan with his one eye sees through the recesses of his mind and comprehends what he really meant. However this may be so, where did Akara, Arkaria Seizai drink the wine? The poorest like Hansen, his spirit like that of Ko, he could barely make his living and yet wishes to rival the wealthiest. Case 11, Joshi's Hermit. Joshi went to a hermit and asked, what's up? What's up? Have, have you any Zen? <laughs> the hermit lifted up his fist. Joshu said, the water is too shallow to anchor here, and went away. Joshu visited the hermit once again a few days later and said, what's up? What's up? The hermit raised his fist again. Then Joshu said, well given, well taken, well killed, well saved. And he bowed to the hermit. Moomin's comment. The raised fist was the same both times. Why was one accepted and the other rejected? Just say, where is the confusion between the two? If you can answer this by a word of true comprehension, then you realize that Joshu's tongue has no bone and that he can absolutely freely use it. Even though this is so, the hermit might have seen Joshu through Joshu both times. If you wonder whether the first hermit be superior or inferior to the second, then you have no one eye. His eye is a meteor. Zen's movement is like lightning. The sword that kills the man is the sword that saves the man. Case 12. Zuigan calls himself Master. Every day Zuigan used to call him out to himself, Master! And then he answered himself, Yes, sir! And he added, Awake! Awake! And then answered, Yes, sir! Yes, sir! From now onwards, do not be deceived by others. No, sir! I will not, sir! Moomin's comment. The Master, Zuigan, sells out and buys himself. He has a lot of puppets of gods and devils that he plays with. Why is this so? With one mask he asked, and with the other he answered. With another mask he said, Awake! And another, Don't be cheated by others. If you adhere to any one of these, you are totally mistaken. If, however, you imitate Zuegan, then all these are no other than the fox's disguises. Some who search the way of Zen do not realize true self, for they recognize only the ego soul. This ego soul is the seed of birth and death. Foolish people take it for the true original self. Case 13, Tokusan's Bull. One day, Tokusan came to the dining room from the meditation hall holding his bull. Seppo saw him coming and asked, the dinner drum is not yet beaten. Where are you going with your bull? Tokusan went back at once to his room Seppo told about this incident to Ganto, who said, Tokusan, as he is, has not penetrated into the ultimate truth of Zen. Tokusan heard of this and sent an acolyte to ask Ganto to come to him. I have heard, told Tokusan, you are not approving my Zen. Ganto whispered to Tokusan what he meant. Tokusan said nothing, leaving Ganto there. Next day, ascending the rostrum, Tokusan delivered an entirely different sermon to the monks. Ganto went forward in the hall, clapped his hands, laughed, and said, What a happy thing! The old man has got hold of the ultimate truth of Zen. From now on, no one in heaven and on earth can surpass him. Moomin's comment. As for the ultimate truth of Zen, neither Tokusan nor Ganto even dreamt of such a thing. When you look into the matter, they are only a set of dummies. How about puppets? Dummies sound like stupid. Whoever understands the first truth, understands the ultimate truth. The last and the first, are they not one and the same? Case 14. Nonsen's a dick. No, <laughs> Nonsen cuts the cat in two. Nonsen saw the monks of the eastern and western halls fighting over a baby cat. He seized the cat and said, If any of you can say a word of Zen, you can spare the cat. Otherwise, I will kill it. 
No one could answer, so Nansen cut the cat in two. That evening, Josh Joshu returned and Nansen told him what had happened. Joshu thereupon took off his sandals and placing them on his head, walked away. Nansen said, if only you had been there, you could have saved the cat. Moomin's comment. Why did Joshu put his sandals on his head? If you can answer the question with one word, you will- <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thank you for joining the Patreon. Um, why did Joshu put his sandals on his head? If you can answer this question with one word, you understand Nansen's efforts. If not, you are utterly in danger. Had Joshu been there, the opposite would have been done. Joshu would have snatched the knife and Nansen would have begged for his life. Case 15. Tozan 60 blows. Tozan went to Unmon and Unmon asked him where he had come from. Tozan answered, from Sato. Then Unmon asked him, or asked, where were you then during the summer? Tozan answered, At Hoji Temple in Konan Prophet, Province. Unman further asked Tozan, When did you leave there? Tozan replied, I left on August 25th. Unman told Tozan, You deserve 60 blows, but I will forgive you today. The next day, Tozan knelt and deeply bowed to Unman and said, Yesterday you forgave me the 60 blows, but I still do not understand in what respect I was wrong. Then Unman told Tozan, you are really a good-for-nothing rice eater. No wonder you wandered around Conan and Kosei for nothing. At this very moment, Tozan was awakened. Moomin's comment. Unman had Tozan feed on the genuine fodder of Zen, showed him the one way of living activity, and helped him from becoming extinct. All night long, Tozan swam in the waves of yes and no until he got nowhere. When the dawn broke again, Tozan went to Uma, Unman to be awakened. After all, Tozan was not so seasoned. Now I will ask you, did Tozan deserve 60 blows? If you say yes, then not only Tozan, but everyone else also deserves 60 blows. If you say no, Unman is a swindler. If therefore you understand this clearly, Tozan and you breathe the same air. The lion roughly teaches her cubs. She kicks them away and the cubs jump. Unman's thrown words hit hit right on Tozan's heart. While Unman's first arrow is light, the second arrow hits deep. Case 16. Unman's Sevenfold Robe. Unman said, The world is vast and wide. For what is it you put on your seven-piece robe at the sound of the bell? Moomin's Comment. When one meditates and studies Zen, one extinguishes the attachment to sound and color. Even though some have attained enlightenment by hearing a sound, or an awakening by seeing a color, these are ordinary matters. Those who intend to master Zen freely master sounds or colors, see clearly the nature of things and every activity of mind. Even though this is so, now tell me, does the sound come to the ear, or does the ear go to the sound? But when both sound and silence are forgotten, what would you call this state? If you listen with your ear, it is hard to hear truly, but if you listen with your eye, then you begin to hear properly. If you are awakened, all things are one and the same. If you are not awakened, all things are varied and distinguished. If you are not awakened, all things are one and the same. If you are awakened, all things are varied and distinguished. Case 17, Echu's Three Calls. Echu, called Kokushi, the teacher of the emperor, called his attendant Ocean three times, and three times Ocean answered, yes. Kokushi said, I thought that I had offended you, but in reality, you offended me. Moomin's comment, Kokushi called Ocean three times. His tongue fell to the ground from talking too much. Ocean answered three times and revealed his harmony with the Tao. Echu, getting old and lonely, attempted even to hold the cow's head down to feed on the grass. Ocean did not trouble to show his zen, for his satisfied stomach had no desire to eat. 
When the nation is prosperous, everyone is too proud to eat plain food. Now just say, who offended which one? When prison conga is iron and has no hole, Echu's followers have neither peace nor rest. When you intend to uphold the teaching of Zen, you must climb a mountain of swords with bare feet. Case 18. Tozan's three pounds of flax. A monk asked Tozan, What is the Buddha? Tozan answered, Three pounds of flax. Moomin's Comet. Tozan Zen is like a clam. When the two halves of the shell open, you can see the hole inside. However, now tell me, what is Tozan's real insides? Just three pounds of flax pops up. His words are close and yet his heart is closer. Anyone who explains this or that, yes and no, is himself the man of yes and no. This is a really good, that's a really good case by the way. That one's really important. <laughs> and I love it. <laughs> Case 19. Nansen's Ordinary Mind. Joshua asks Nansen. <laughs> Nansen. But it's, I don't think it's Nansen. I think it's Nansen. Sorry. I said Nansen. That sounds like a, a set of three brothers in the 90s who sang Mbop. That, that's, it's probably Nansen. It also probably would Tsao earlier, but, you know, whatever. You know, they're not, per it's not perfect. You know, Poe Buddy's nerfed. Welcome. Welcome to Zen. Uh, okay. <laughs> Case 9. Nonsense Ordinary Mind. Joshua asked Nonsen, What is the way? Nonsen answered, Your ordinary mind, that is the way. Joshua asked, Can it be grasped for study? Nonsen replied, The more you pursue, the more does it slip away. Joshua asked once more, How can you know it is the way? Nonsen responded, the way does not belong to knowledge, nor does it belong to non-knowledge. Knowledge is an illusion. Non-knowledge is beyond discrimination. When you get to this way without doubt, you are free like the vastness of space, an unfathomable void. So how can you explain it by yes or no? Upon hearing this, Joshua was awakened. Moomin's Comet The question Joshua asked Nansen was dissolved by a stroke. After being enlightened, Joshua must further his pursuit 30 more years to exhaust that meaning. Hundred flowers in spring, the moon in autumn, the cool wind in summer and winter snow. If your mind is not clouded with things, you are happy at any time. Smoke weed every day, weed every day, weed every day, weed every day. Smoke weed, smoke weed, smoke weed, weed every weed, 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 weed every day. Thank you for the donation. There was a cuss, so it didn't read, but I read it. I read it. I read it. Case 20. Shogun Strongman. Shogun said, Why is it that a man of strength cannot lift up his own legs and stand up for Zen? And again, It is not with our tongue that we speak. Moomin's comment. Shogun said it by turning his heart inside out, and no one was there to receive it. If anyone should comprehend Shogun, then come to me and receive my blows. To know the genuine gold, you must see it through fire. Raising my foot, I turn upside. <laughs> Sorry, just, that was a good comment. It's because you skipped leg day. It's very small there, but okay. <clears throat> Raising my foot, I turn yeah, upside down, down the more. center. <laughs> Thank you for the, for the tip. <clears throat> Bowing my head, I look down on the four Dian Diana, Diana heavens, the Guiana highlands. That's right. Such a body of full strength has no place to rest. Please finish this verse yourself. I don't feel like writing it. <laughs> it's super zen to ask someone else to do your work for you. This is maybe the most zen thing. <laughs> Case 21. Unman's dried dung. A monk asked Unman, What is Buddha? Unman answered him, Dried dung. Moomin's comment. We must say that being so poor, Unman cannot appreciate plain food, or he is so busy that he cannot even scribble properly. He is disposed to support his school with dry dung. Look at how devastated the Buddhist teaching has been. 
Lightning flashes, sparks of striking flint. In a blink of your eyes, you have passed by and missed it. Case 22, Kashapa's flagpole. Ananda asked Maha Kashapa, Buddha gave you the golden wove, woven robe, not wove, the golden woven robe of successorship. What else did he give you? Kashapa said, Ananda. Yes, answered Ananda. Knock down the flagpole at the gate, said Kashapa. Moomin's comments. If you can give a turning word, a momentous word for awakening, you will see the meeting at Mount Gurd... Again, really? Gurdhrahuta. Still in session. If not, no matter how much you make struggles to study from the age of Vip Vipa Vipassian, you cannot attain enlightenment. How is Ananda's question compared to Kashapa's answer of heart? How many people have since then opened their eyes? Elder brothers call and younger brothers answers. The family's disgrace. This spring does not belong to yin and yang. Yin and yang. Jesus, I... Whew. You know, I did this and I forgot how many words there were that I probably wouldn't be able to read, but, you know, here we, here we are. You know, bad ideas are the same as good ideas. There's zero difference between right and wrong. You idiot. You stupid moron. <clears throat> nah, Moomin's comments are from the translator, I don't think. I can check real quick. It's 29 out of 58. Yeah, no, it's... Yeah. It's it, the person who did the preface did that. Who knows? Also, I like them. They're real good. <clears throat> All right. Case 23. Eno is good and evil. Eno, the sixth patriarch, was pursued by monk Emyo up to Diuri. 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 The patriarch, seeing Emyo coming, laid the robe and the bowl on a rock and said to him, This robe represents the faith. Is it to be fought for by force? You may take them now. Emyo went to move the bowl and the robe, and yet they were as heavy as mountains. He could not move them. Hesitating and trembling, Emyo asked the patriarch, I come for the teaching, not for the robe. Please enlighten me. The patriarch said, What is primordially Emyo? i.e. your true self. If you do not think this is good, nor do you think this is evil? At that moment, Emyo was greatly awakened, really super awakened, like way more than everyone else. Like we're talking like supreme, like this dude was real awakened. His whole body was covered with sweat. Emyo cried, bowed and said, is there or is there not any other deep significance in Zen than your secret words and teachings a minute ago? The patriarch answered, what I have told you is no secret at all. Once you've realized your own true self, the depth in Zen rather belongs to you. Emyo said, When I was at Obai with the other monks, I never realized what my true self was. Now you've dispersed the clouds of my ignorance to realize it, just like a man capable of discerning warm and cold by tasting water. From now on, you are my teacher, the patriarch said. We both have Obai for our teacher. Guard your own self. Moomin's comments! <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> we should say this, that the sixth patriarch was in an emergency. This revelation of his, however, resembles the deed of an overly protective grandmother who peeled a fresh lychee, a dessert fruit, removed its stone and put it into her grandchild's mouth, ready for him to swallow. You described it in vain, you, you picture it to no avail. Praising it as useless, Cease to worry about it all. It is your true self. It has nowhere to hide. Even if the universe is annihilated, it is not destroyed. Case 24. Fuketsu silence and words. I can I can confirm that uh, Lychee are, are very, very good. They're very good. <laughs> An extremely... <laughs> <laughs> in extremely Seinfeld voice. Moomin. <laughs> Case 24. Fuketsu's silence and words. A monk asked Fuketsu, without words or without silence transgressing, how can one be unmistakably one with the universe? Fuketsu said, I often think of March and Conan. 
The birds sing among hundreds of flagrant flowers. They might have meant fragrant. I doubt they meant flagrant. That that's a di that's a different word. Moomin's comments. Fuketsu's mind was quick as lightning, snatching the road and walking on it. Regrettably, Fuketsu was not able to sit on the words of the ancestors. If anyone should penetrate into this, he would be absolutely free. Without words, without phrases, now say what Zen is. Fuketsu did not say such a fine phrase. Without uttering words, he already let it be known. If Fuketsu had become talkative, you do not know what to do. Case 25. Kyozan's sermon from the third seat. In a dream, Kyozan went to Matri Maitreya's pure land and sat in the third seat. A monk there beat the gravel, a gavel and said, Today the one in the third seat will give a sermon. Kyozan arose, hit the gavel, and said, The truth of Mahayana is beyond any verbal expression. Listen, listen. Moomin's comments. You tell me, did Kyozan preach or did he not? If he opens his mouth, he is lost. If he seals his mouth, he is lost too. Whether he opens or seals his mouth, Kyozan is 108,000 miles away from the truth. In the bright daylight, and yet in dream, he talks a dream. Indeed, a possessed word, a possessed word. He is deceiving the entire crowd. Case 26. Two monks roll up the blunts. No, two monks roll up the blinds. A Hogan of Seiryu came to the hall to speak to the monks before the midday meal. He pointed with his finger to the bamboo blinds. At this moment, two monks rose and rolled the blinds up. The Hogan observed, one has it, the other hasn't it. Moomin's comments. Now tell me, which one has it and which one has not? If any one of you has one eye, he will see through the failure on Hogan of Seiryu. However, never be concerned about the, the gain or the loss. When the blinds are rolled up, the great sky is bright and clear. The great sky is not yet in accord with Zen. It's better to throw everything away from the sky and make sure to have not even a draft blow through. Case 27. Nonsense no mind, no Buddha. A monk asked Nansen, is there any teaching no master has ever preached before? Nansen answered, yes, there is. What is it? Asked the monk. Nansen answered, it is not mind. It is not Buddha. It is not things. Moomin's comment. Being asked a question, Nansen gave away his entire treasure, words, and suffered a run of bad luck. Nansen was too kind and lost his treasure. Verily, words have no power. Even if a mountain may become a blue ocean, Nansen will never make it comprehensible to you. Case 21. 20. Jeez. Case 28. Just kidding. Case 28. Ryutan's candle. One night, Tokusan went to Ryutan to ask for a teaching, for his teaching. After Tokusan's many questions, Ryutan said to Tokusan at last, It is late, why don't you retire? So Tokusan bowed, lifted the screen, and was ready to go out observing. It is very dark outside. Ryutan lit a candle and offered it to to Tokusan. Just as Tokusan received it, Ryutan blew it out. At that moment, the mind of Tokusan was open. What have you realized? asked Ryutan to Tokusan, who replied, From now on, I will not doubt what you have said. The next day, Ryutan ascended the rostrum and declared to the monks, Among you there is one monk whose teeth are like the sword tree. His mouth is like the blood bowl. Strike him with a stick. He won't turn his head to look at you. Someday he will climb the highest peaks and carry out my teaching there. On that day, in front of the lecture hall, Tokusan burned to ashes his commentaries on the sutras and declared, In comparison to this awareness, all the most profound teachings are like a single hair in vast space. However deep the complicated knowledge of the world, compared to this enlightenment, it is like one drop of water in the ocean. Then he left the monastery. Movement's comments. Before Tokusan passed through the barrier, his mind was eager. His mouth was anxious. With a purpose in his mind, he went south to refute the, the doctrine of a special transmission outside the sutras. When he got on the road to Raishu, near Ryutan's monastery, he asked an old woman to let him have something to point his mind. 
literally a snack, then something to put his mind at ease at the same time. The old woman asked Tokusan, What is all the writing you're carrying? Tokusan replied, That's the manuscript of my notes and commentary on the Diamond Sutra. Then the old woman said, That sutra says the past mind cannot be held, the present mind cannot be held, the future mind cannot be held. All of them are but unreal and illusory. You wish to have some refreshments. Well then, which of your minds do you want to have the refreshments? Tokusan found himself quite dumb. Finally, he asked the woman, Do you know of any Zen masters around here? About five li away lives Ryotan. Ryutan, said she. Tokusan arrived at Ryutan's monastery with all humility, quite different from when he had started his journey. Ryutan, in turn, was so kind he forgot his own dignity. It was like pouring muddy water over a drunken man to sober him. After all, it was an unnecessary comedy. Rather than hearing the name, seeing the face is better. Rather than seeing the face, hearing the name is better. But how much help, how much you help the nostrils, look what you've done to the eyes. Case 29. Eno's flag. The wind was snap the wind was flapping a temple flag, and two monks were arguing about the flag. One said, the flag is moving. The other said, the wind is moving. They could not agree no matter how hard they debated. The sixth patriarch, Eno, happened to come by and said, not the wind, not the flag, it is the mind that is moving. The two months were struck with awe. Moomin's comments. It is not the wind that moves, it is not the flag that moves, it is not the mind that moves. How shall we understand the sixth patriarch? If you gain an intimate grasp of its meaning, you will see how the two monks intended to buy iron got gold. The Patriarch could not repress his compassion for the two monks, and so we have this disgraceful scene. Wind, flag, and mind moves all confirmed as guilty of error. Only we know our mouth is opened. We do not know our speech went wrong. Case 30. Basso's very mind. Daibai asked Basso, What is the Buddha? Basso answered, The mind is the Buddha. Moomin's comments. If you fully understand Basso's meaning, you are wearing Buddha's clothes, eating Buddha's food, speaking Buddha's words, doing Buddha's deeds. That is to say, you are Buddha himself. But Basso misled not a few people into erroring the principles of Zen. He does not realize that if we explain the word Buddha, we must rinse our mouths for three days afterward. If he is a man of understanding, he would cover his ears and run away hearing Basso say, the mind is Buddha. Under blue sky and bright sunlight, one need not search around asking what Buddha is. Is liking the stolen goods in one's pocket and declaring oneself innocent. Case 31. Joshua investigates an old woman. A traveling monk asked an old woman the way to Taizan. The old woman said, go straight ahead. When the monk proceeded a few steps, she said to herself, this monk with such spirit also goes off like that. Afterwards, another monk told Joshua about this, and Joshua said, Wait until I go and investigate the old woman. The next day, off Joshua went and asked the same question, and the old woman gave the same answer. Upon his return, Joshua told the congregation of monks, I have investigated the old woman of Taizan. Moon's comments. The old woman sat in the tent and planned the campaign, but she did not know that there was a famous bandit who knew how to take the enemy commander prisoner. Old Joshu sneaked into her tent and menaced her fortress, but he wasn't a real general. Indeed, both had their faults. Now I'd like to ask you, what was the point of Joshu investigating the old woman? The question was the same, the answer was the same. Sand in the rice, thorns in the mud. Case 32 a pagan asks Buddha. A pagan asked Buddha, With words, with silence, will you tell me the way? Buddha silently kept meditating. The pagan bowed and thanked the Buddha, saying, With the compassion you have cleared away the clouds of my mind and have made me enter into the awakening. After he left, Ananda asked the Buddha what he had attained. The Buddha said, A good horse runs even on a shadow of the whip. Moomin's comments. Ananda was Buddha's disciple, but his understanding was not like that pagan. Now tell me, how afar are the disciple and the non-disciple? 
Treading on the sharp edge of a sword, running over jagged ice, not climbing on the ladder, letting your hands off the cliff. Case 33, neither mind nor Buddha. A monk asked Basau, what is the Buddha? Basau replied, not mind, not Buddha. Moomin's comments, if anyone understands what Basau said, he has mastered Zen. If you meet a sword master on the road, give him the sword. Unless you meet a poet on the road, do not offer him a poem. If you meet a man, tell him the three quarters of the way and never tell him the rest. Case 34. Nonsense no way. Nonsense said, Mind is not Buddha. Knowledge is not the way. Moomin's comments. Growing old, Nonsense forgot to be ashamed. With his stinking mouth open, he spread the scandal of his own house, such as knowledge is not the way, to others. However, a few appreciate their indebtedness to him. When the sky is clear and the sun appears, when rain falls, the earth becomes moistened. How wholeheartedly he explains how few have faith in him and his words. Case 35. Two souls. Gosu asked a monk. Say, money. the Chinese girl. <laughs> Thank you for the resub, guys. <laughs> With my stinking mouth open, I spread the scandal of my sub to others. Thank you kindly. Ghost who asked a monk, say, the Chinese girl who was separated from her soul. Which was the real say? Moomin's comments, if you obtain genuine awareness of reality, you will know that the soul passes from one husk to another as travelers lodge in an inn. But if you have not obtained aware awareness, you should not run around in confusion when the four elements are suddenly ready to become separated, i.e. to die like the crab with its seven arms and eight legs thrown into the boiling water. Never say that I did not warn you. The moon and the clouds is one and the same. Valleys and mountains are various. Fortunes above fortunes. Is it one or is it two? Case 36. Gosu has no words, no silence. Gosu said, when you meet a man of the way on the road, greet him not with words nor with silence. Tell me, how will you greet him? Moomin's comments. If you can answer the Gosu exactly, it will be extremely heartening. If you cannot answer properly yet, then you must do your best to watch out everything. Meeting the man of the way on the road, greeting him not with words nor with silence, give him an uppercut, then he will understand you at once. Case 37, Joshu's Oak Tree in the Garden. A monk asked Joshu, Joshu, <laughs> Joshu, <laughs> with what intention did Bodhidharma, Bodhidharma come to China? Joshu answered, the oak tree in the front garden. Moomin's comments, if you grasp Joshu's answer precisely, there is no Shakya, Shakyamuni Buddha before you and no Maitreya Buddha after you. Words do not express fact. Phrases do not reveal the delicate motion of mind. He who accepts words is lost. He who adheres to phrases is deluded. Pace 38, Gosu's Buffalo. Goso asked, a water buffalo goes out of his enclosure. The head, the horns, and the four legs go through, but why doesn't the tail too? Movement's comment. If you can open your one eye to the question and say an awakening word, you will be able to repay the four obligations and help the three bhava being saved. If you still have not gotten it, take a close look on the tail and awake yourself. If the buffalo goes through, he will fall into the abyss. If he retreats into the enclosure, he will be butchered. This little bit of tail, that is a strength, strange thing indeed. Case 39. Unman and trap into words. As soon as a monk stated Unman, the radiance of the Buddha quietly and restlessly illuminates the whole universe. Unman asked him, are these you are reciting not the words of Chozetsu Shushai? The monk replied, Yes, they are, Unman said. You were trapped in words. Afterwards, Shishin brought up the matter once more and said, Tell me, how was the monk trapped in words? Unman's comments. If you were able to grasp Unman's unapproachable accomplishments and follow through the monk's corruption of being trapped into words, 
you will be the leader of humans and divas. If not, you cannot even save yourself. The fish meets the fish hook in a rapid stream, being too greedy for the bait the fish wants to bite. Once his mouth is once his mouth widely opens, his life is already lost. Case 40. Kicking the drinking water jar. During his stay under Master Hyokojo, Kujo, Isan was cooking was a cooking monk. He wasn't cooking monk, he was a cooking monk. That's very different. That's a very, very large difference. As Master Hyakujo wished to send the monk to found the new monastery called the Great Mount, I, Master Hyakujo, told the chief monk and all the other monks that he would choose them, the one who would demonstrate himself as the best among them. Then, Master Hyakujo brought out a drinking water jar, put it down and said, You cannot call it a water jar. Then what will you call it? The chief monk said, One cannot call it a wooden stick. Then when Master Hyakujo Hikujo turned to Isan. Isan kicked the jar and walked away. Master Hikujo laughed and said, The chief monk lost it to Isan. He made Isan the founder of the great Isan monaster Monastery. <clears throat> Lumen's comments. Master Isan had indeed rare courage, but he could not jump out of Master Hikujo's trap. After examination of the outcome, Isan took over the heavier burden for the easier job. Why? Look, Isan took off the cook's headband and put himself in steel cuffs of the founder of the monastery. Throwing away strainers and cooking spoon, Isan kicked the jars and settled the, settles the disputes. Unhindered by the multiple hurdles, he gives a kick on the toe. Even Buddha becomes pieces. Case 41, Bodhidharma's Peace of Mind. Bodhidharma sit facing the stone wall. The second patriarch, Suika, stood long in the thick snow. Finally, he severed his own arm and presented it to Bodhidharma. He said, Your student cannot pacify his mind, you, the first patriarch. Please give me peace of mind. The first patriarch replied, Bring that mind, I will calm it down. The second patriarch said, I search for it everywhere, but I cannot find it. Bodhidharma replied, I have already pacified it for you. Moomin's comments. That toothless old chap from India proudly traveled 10,000 li over the ocean to China. This was indeed as if he de deliberately raised waves where there was no wave. At last he got only one disciple, who was maimed by cutting off his ar own arm. Alas, he was a fool indeed. Don't cut off your arm. The first patriarch from India taught straightforward the series of all troubles that is, has initiated from him. The one who disturbed the calm world is Bodhidharma. You indeed. Case 42. A woman comes out of meditation. When the wisest Bodhisattva, Manjuris, Manjusuri, who is supposed to be the next in order to Shakyamu, Shakyamuni Buddha, found that the Buddha gathering was adjourned and each was going back to his or her land. Observing one woman still deep in meditation near Sha Shakyamuni, Manjus Manjusuri <laughs> properly bowed and asked Shakyamuni, Buddha, that woman who has not been able to reach the state, the state of enlightenment and what the woman has been able to reach this, that state of enlightenment and why have I not? Shakyamuni replied, Bring her from the Samadhi and ask her yourself. Montessori went, went round the woman three times and snapped his fingers, and yet she was undisturbed in meditation. So Montessori held her up, her high up in his hand, and brought her to the first of three meditative heavens, totally detached from any lust, and exhausted all his mystical powers in vain to awaken her. Observing this, Shakyamuni said, even a hundred thousand Manjusuris could not awaken her from Samadhi. There resides Momyo, Avidya, Bodhisattva, the lowest of all, below this place past twelve hundred million lands. He alone can raise her from her deep meditation. No sooner had the Shakyamuni spoken than the Bodhisattva, than that, than that Bodhisattva sprang up, out from the earth, bowed and paid his homage, his homage, to Shakyamuni. By Shakyamuni order. 
Momyo Bodhisattva snapped his fingers. Instantly, the woman came out of medita meditation and stood up. Lumen's comments. The old chap, Shakyamuni, is extraordinary indeed, able to produce such a village theater stage. Now then tell me, why was Manjusuri, the highest and wisest of the seven Bodhisattva, unable to bring her out of meditation? Why was Momyo Bodhisattva, the lowest of all, able to do so? Should you obtain and live this complete understanding of it? You will attain the great Samadhi within this mundane world of delusion and attachment. Whether the one who could bring her out of her meditation, or the other who could not, both of them obtained freedom. The one wore the mask of God, the other a devil's mask in the theater. Even the failure is artistic indeed. And I seriously need to go grab a drink because my throat is... Uh, my tongue is like super dry. And I'm and I'm working, yeah, just a, just a moment. My my throat is like mad having a goof right now. Okay, much better. <laughs> oh, man. This mix is almost done. Let me find another one here for us all. I need another vaporwave mix. That'll do it, baby. Oh, shucks. There we go. <clears throat> there we go. Case 43, Shuzan's bamboo spatula. Master Shuzan held out his bamboo spatula and asked, If you call this a bamboo spatula, you give umbrage to the principle of Zen. If you call this no bamboo spatula, you violate the law of common sense. What will all of you call this? Lumen's comments. Should you call this a bamboo spatula, you would give umbrage. Should you call this no bamboo spatula, you would betray the law. Both to speak out will not do and no word will be of any use either. Quickly say, quickly say. Bringing out the bamboo spatula, Shuzan demanded the order of life or death. Being put to either umbrage or the betrayal, even Buddha and patriarchs would beg for their lives. Case 44, Basho's staff. Master Basho said to his disciples, if you have the staff, I will give it to you. If you have no staff, I will take it away from you. Moomin's comments. This staff helps you cross the river with the shattered bridge. The staff leads your you back to your village in the moonless dark night. If you call it the staff, then you will go right into hell like an arrow. Whether one is deep or shallow, it lies in the palm of the hand which holds the staff. The staff supports the heaven and maintains the earth. Wherever the staff freely goes, it will propagate the true teaching. Case 45. Who is he? The Tozan, Master Hoenn, the fifth patriarch, said, Shakyamuni and Matriya Bodhisattva, both are his slaves. Well, tell me, who is he? Moomin's comments. Should you be able to clearly realize who he is, it would be as if you met your own father at the crossroads, as you do not have to ask your own father who he is. Do not use another bow, another's bow and arrow. Do not ride somebody else's horse. Do not discuss someone else's faults. Do not try to know some other person's business. Case 46. Proceed beyond the top of the 100 foot high pole. Master Sekiso said, you are at the top of the 100 foot high pole. How will you make a step further? Another Zen master of ancient times said, one who sits on top of the 100-foot pole has not quite attained true enlightenment. Make another step for forward from the top of the pole and throw one's own body into the 100,000 universes. Moomin's comments. 
Should there be any who is able to make a step forward from the top of a 100-foot pole and hurl one's entire whole body into the entire universe, this person may call oneself a Buddha. Nevertheless, how can one make a step forward from the top of the 100-foot pole? Know thyself! Should one be content and settle on top of the 100,000-foot pole, one will harm the third eye, and will even misread the marks on the scale. Should one throw oneself and be able to renounce one's life, like one blind person leading all other blind persons, one will be in absolute freedom, unattached from the eyes. Ace 47. Tosotsu's Three Barriers. Master Tosotsu, setting up the three barriers, always tried the pursuer of the way. The search for the way, the Zen student tries to grasp one's own nature and be enlightened. Now, where is your true nature? Secondly, once having grasped one's own nature, one is free from birth and death. If then one's eyeballs have dropped dead, how can one be free from life? Thirdly, being free from birth and death, one instantly knows where to go after death. Being dead and the body dispersed into the four elements, where then does one go? Movement's comments. Whoever can pass these three barriers will be a master anywhere. Whatever happens, this person should be able to become the founder of Zen. Should one not be yet capable of answering these three questions, this person must diligently chew them well enough to finally comprehend them. Humble meals fill one's stomach, and chewing them well, one will never starve. To instantly realize is to see endless time. Endless time is this very moment. If one sees through the thought of this very moment, at this very moment, one can see through the one who sees through. Case 48. The One Road of Kempo. A student monk asked Master Kempo, I understand that all Buddha of the whole universe enter the One Road into Nirvana. Where is this One Road? Kempo raised his walking stick, drew the figure one, and said, Here it is. Later, this monk went to Uman to ask the question. Uman turning around his fan said, This fan will reach the 33rd heaven and hit the nose of Sakra Devendra, the highest deity in these heavens. It is like the giant carp of the eastern sea, tipping over with its tail a rain cloud to have the rain pour down. Lumen's comments. The one master walks on the deep ocean and raises dust. The other, standing on the tip of the highest mountain, fills the heavens with white waves. The one holds the point where the other liberates everything. Together, each supports the profound teaching with one hand. Kempo and Uman are dangerous, like two equally powerful camels colliding. No one in the world equals them. Seen from the truth, however, even Kempo and Muman did not know where this one road really is. They reach the goal before taking the first step, they complete the speech before their tongues move. Even if they had foresight long before, the origin of the road lies away ahead of their foresight. The Epilogue. The words and the actions left by Buddha and the patriarchs in these 48 koans are as precise as laws and judgments, and therefore nothing superflu superfluous is contained. They turn the student monk's brain upside down and hollow out his eyeballs. They are here in order that each one of you will immediately grasp truth and must not try to obtain it vicari vic vicariously from others. Should there be anyone who thoroughly appropriates everything, the person would seize the true meaning of all 48 koans as listening to the small portion of them. To such a person there is no gate to enlightenment nor steps to the search. He may go through the gate with no concern of the gatekeepers, as Gensho said. It is the gateless that is every entrance to realization, and to be aimless is genuine aim of the master. Hakun also said, why can one not go through this very gate, although it is so obvious? Such stories are indeed as meaningless as mixing milk with red clay. If you can pass these 48 koans through the gateless gate, you will step on me, Muman, under your foot. If you cannot pass through the gateless gate, you will betray yourself, as often said, 
It is easy to illuminate the realization that everything is empty, but it is difficult indeed to elucidate the knowledge of distinctions. If you are able to edify the wisdom of differences, the universe will be well at peace. Well, thanks everybody. I hope you had a good time learning about Zen. I think it was a good time for everybody. You know, no big dude, just having a time learning about Zen. Enjoy. Uh, so I hope that was cool. I hope you had a fun time. I know I did. Enjoy. Learn. I hope. I hope you learned a lot. I hope you had a time. I'll see you all tomorrow. I'm gonna probably be playing Sonic Mania. I don't. I don't know for sure. Uh, and then Thursday is gonna be Sonic and the Black Knight. Uh, I need to make a ad for that probably. I think. Um. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, that was the time. I'm gonna go ahead and host my buddy Author Blues, who is uh, uh, who is playing a baby game. Uh, feel free to just post. I think the word we're gonna use for the raid is just uh, enlightenment. Just enlightenment. Just just post enlightened or enlightenment one time once you go over to that chat. Thank you. I love you. Uh, if you aren't already following. This is a weird time to ask, I think, but I'm still gonna do it because it's important for me to live. If you aren't following, please do. If you really like what you see, feel free to uh, sub to me. That'd be dope as fuck. Thanks, uh, have a good night. Take her easy.